In this video, I'm gonna show you a modified clamshell lighting setup that's perfect for editorial portraits in your studio. Let's jump in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to SLR Lounge. First things first, this is the lovely Kiara. We will link her up so you guys can give her a follow if you would like. I'm sure you're familiar with her. She's on our channel quite a bit. Um, I want to go through this modified. It's mainly a, a two light clamshell light setup, but we've done some modifications to it that I think are kind of fun and it works really well for editorial portraits in the studio. Let's go ahead and break it down right from the beginning. I'm going to work light by light to show you the full setup. Let's go ahead and go straight to the back first. Y'all can use any background you would like, okay? Our, I would actually use our wall, but our purple wall needs to get repainted. It's got some uh, chips and stuff on it. So I just put up a backdrop in front of it. Anything is gonna work totally fine. But in the back, aside from seeing a bit of a mess, come over here, Viet. You'll see that we have a Westcott FJ400 strobe placed onto a C-stand, and it's shooting just above and over the background to give us a little bit of a hair light. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this setup and I'm actually gonna turn on and off each light so you can see exactly what it's doing. So this is just gonna give us a little bit of a, a shoulder and kind of rim light on our subject to make for just a little bit of depth. Now, I, I would say that you can totally pull this off without that. So if there was an optional light, that would be like the optional third light, okay? Over here for our fill light next, I set up a fill light just to create general fill in the scene. You're gonna notice this is coming from bottom up. That's a typical setup for a clamshell light, but the reason why it's gonna work is because we're not gonna do a lot of power coming through this. And also we have a main light, which I'll talk about in just a moment. For the fill, I have another FJ400 and on it is the Rapid Box. This is the Okta, I believe it's the Switchbox Medium Okta, okay? We'll link up all the, the equipment and the gear that we use in the description of the video so you guys can have the exact gear and everything. Again, the key here is we're not going to be pushing a lot of power. It's just a basic fill that we would get from like a typical clamshell setup. And it's called that clamshell setup because it looks like a clamp, right? You have one light above, one light below, and that creates the look. Overhead, we have our main. So this is the Joel Grant's Beauty Dish. That's another Westcott modifier that's on another FJ400. So it's a, a minimum of, I'd say, a two light setup. But if you want that optional third light for like a hair light or rim, then you have that as well, okay? All right, so this is the basic setup. You'll notice that with a clamshell setup, what we're really getting is like a, a paramount light, this butterfly light coming top down direct, and then we're getting just a fill coming bottom up, okay? So it's all direct light. But one modification that we've done as well is we have two V-flats. These are V-flats from V-flat world on each side, which are gonna create negative fill. It's gonna kind of chisel out the size of the face uh, in fact, I'll just show you in just a moment. So let's go ahead and show you what each of these lights are doing because when building a set like this, I didn't want to make this video 30 minutes long and like kind of build step by step. So I want to show you kind of how I would typically start a set like this. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off these two lights. And I would always recommend starting, you know, you building a set with just one light at a time. And I don't know why, I, I usually prefer to kind of dial in the ambient light, like what I want the scene to look like and things in the background. So I'm gonna start at 1 200th in my shutter speed, F2.8. We're gonna go to low ISO. And I'm just gonna show you what the hair light is doing in the background or that rim light, okay? So I'm gonna step a little bit in, right about to there. Okay, so that's the baseline exposure. And you can see exactly what the rim light is doing. It's just creating edging on our subject. Um, and Kiara's hair right now is slicked back. If you have like kind of uh, whatever your hair is doing, I, I was mentioning you have often wear your hair in like a fro and it looks absolutely awesome when it's backlit too. So I just like the look, it creates depth, but it's kind of an optional setup, okay? The next thing that we need is obviously the entire scene is really dark, right? So this is where I would build fill. So again, kind of working like, what do I want the ambient setup to kind of look like before I worry about any main light? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fill light. I don't want you guys to worry too much about the power settings because whatever you're shooting with, whatever your aperture, whatever your lens and your combination, you're gonna need to tweak and make adjustments, but I want you to have a rough idea. So that light is direct, there's no modifiers and it's a very low power setting. We have this light now, which is gonna be set to, I believe 3.5. Let me just check, um, yes. So 3.5 for the power on this one. So it's roughly, you know, three, four times brighter than that uh, background light, okay? Or the rim light. But it's also going through a, a modifier too. So if I take the same shot and setup, same everything, now you see this. Okay. And we generally look at this and go, that looks 
pretty awful. We don't typically light bottom up, right? Because it creates a very unnatural look to a scene. It creates that campfire lighting kind of look. That's not what we're going for. But what we are going for is this general kind of fill that's coming up. And as a fill, it's gonna work out really nicely. So don't worry about it too much on the face and the direction of light. Just look at it from scene fill and kind of like fill on the person's body, right? So you can adjust the drama of the image by adjusting this light. The more fill you have, the less drama in the image. The less fill you have, the more dramatic, the more shadows are gonna be there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is add the main light. So as I'm building a set like this, this is my exact approach. I kind of decide like, what do I want the ambience of the image to look like? And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the main light. This is going directly to her face and it's gonna add a little bit of light to the background, but it really is going to chisel out the face. And you'll notice that with this setup, I have it kind of dialed in where you'll see a little bit more light on the face and it'll start to fall off as we kind of go down the body, okay? So same exact pose and everything. And that is hit perfect okay and that's it so it, it's crazy that once you add the main that up lighting effect that you get from the fill is is completely gone and it looks actually pretty awesome right the one thing i want to show you is what the v flats are doing so if you look at the sides of the cheek you can actually see the negative fill but i'm going to go ahead and just take them away for just a second so you can see and then add them back okay and the same shot without negative fill. What you tend to notice with a negative fill is you're subtracting any light that might be bouncing off of other places in your scene. In this scene, you'll see a little bit of a difference because we do have some light kind of coming in and bouncing from the right side. There's not only a window, but there's white on the right side. That's where it's most noticeable. But if you're working in a white room, you're gonna see a dramatic difference bringing those negative fill cards in to subtract light from the scene. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take some final images. I love when she tips the head back, you can kind of see that that rim light edging across the top of the head. It really does a nice job of separating her from the background. I dig that very subtle look. Keep those rim lights more on the subtle side, by the way. It's very easy to kind of overpower and create something that's a little bit too much. But anyway, that's our setup here. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some more images just for us. I hope you guys enjoyed the video though. We're gonna link up again all the gear that we used. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, and side note. If you guys have any comments, any thoughts, any questions, I read all the comments. I get a lot of my ideas from you all. So if you have anything that you want to see, let us know. We'll bring it to you in a future video. That's it for us. Peace.